Hi, we're with Stock Market Live.tv. Today in this complimentary uh, investment lesson, which I invite you to stay until the end, we are going to discuss the collapse of the uh, financial sector in the United States. How did we predict it, as well as the bottom in 2009. And I'm going to show you three information that exists on uh, uh, CNBC and our algorithm got this information in real time and when the Americans they turned bullish at the very top and I'm going to demonstrate in an article on CNBC we turned bearish downgrading bank stocks in 2015 to strong sell ahead of a crash. The same uh, principle was uh, utilized precisely in 2009 when American stock gurus on TV they uh, recommended to sell bank stocks and uh, moreover to sell short bank stocks we call it the ultimate market bottom recommended to buy the most in the past 20 years in the markets. I'm referring to uh, stocks at that time as Goldman Sachs or Wells Fargo as well as many others. So today we are going to start with uh, Mark Faber as well as Jim Rogers. These were the two stock gurus that they appear on several books uh, claiming to be professionals and experts in the financial markets. They are US citizens but appearing that they are no longer living in the United States, they ran away, uh, they were the ones making those calls at the very bottom, recommending to sell everything, recommending to sell short financial stocks at the bottom. And this coincided with our call, turning bullish in the US stock market and in the financial sector. And in our blog you find uh, many examples of it, articles discussing step by step why to invest in financial stocks for so long. In 2015 we downgraded financial stocks to strong sell. Uh, there is an ETF uh, that addresses the financial sector and we are going today to discuss uh, this ETF. But the most important uh, lasted in 2015 when we predicted that financial stocks they were going to collapse once again. We made the call in several important companies in the United States. For example, Morgan Stanley, you'll find an article on the blog of the company recommending to sell at $40.30, dump everything, downgrading to strong sell. The case of Goldman Sachs, a triple short position, starting with $190 all the way up to $210. But if your question is why did we turn uh, bearish financial stocks in 2015 and you had then several articles saying that the markets they were going to crash and they crashed, I'm going to show you the main responsible for the crash in financial stocks in the United States. Because in the end I didn't predict absolutely anything. What I did was to read in real time market information and the news that they appear on CNBC, our algorithm caught this in real time. So I'm going to show you here by referring to this article on CNBC dated Monday 20 July 2015 and the title of the article as you can read here on the screen time to aggressively buy big banks. I'm going to repeat again, time to aggressively buy big banks. Monday 20 July 2015. This article where you have the picture of this individual, Dick Bove, Dick Bove for your information in the United States is seen as the number one, the expert the stock guru in the financial stocks, in the financial sector, the number one, the stock guru, is invited to appear 
on TV to give his opinion, probably he's paid for it as well, and likely on his own website, you have there stamps from Reuters, Bloomberg, and many other institutions. This person, by saying that you have to buy aggressively big banks on July 20, 2015, he made the call precisely at the top. So what you were saying, what you were doing, once this article appeared on CNBC, was to dump immediately every single financial stock, going short, and by doing so, then you became a multimillionaire selling short financial stocks. And I'm going to show you by referring to this chart here that represents the financial sector. This chart is an ETF, uh, the ticker FAS. If you are a professional or involved in markets, you know what I'm talking about. And you see here precisely once the article appeared on CNBC, financial sector collapsed and collapsed all the way down in January 2016 to a price more or less $18. So it went from 35, 36 all the way down to uh, $18. 50% collapse once the expert stock guru Dick Bove appeared on CNBC saying that you had to invest to buy aggressively big banks. All right. Now I'm going to refer to some picks, complementary stock picks that you find in our blog. And you, by the way, you have more than 1000 articles on the blog and therefore I'm just going to uh, consider here one, although there are several. There is an article and you have here uh, the picture as well as the title of article. The title is very explicit, very objective. Win a Ferrari selling short bank stocks responsible for the financial crisis. You can read here the article and if you read the article that referred to several names uh, that we uh, sold short in 2015, the case of American Express where Goldman Sachs had a strong buy rating, shares of American Express, they collapsed all the way down to $53. At $53, I recommended to close uh, short positions, I upgrade the stock. Today, American Express in 2016 is a stock trading around $65. Okay, so before you invested in American Express, you had to profit from the collapse in American Express. Precisely, strong buy rating, Goldman Sachs $92, shares they collapsed to a price $50. Okay, so pretty simple, you have to do precisely the opposite. But I was not going to mention uh, American Express. American Express is one of the stocks addressed in this article. The free stock pick that this article refers to is uh, Piper Jeffrey, uh, one of the uh, advisors, worthless advisors in the US, a public company. And here you have a sentence, and I'm going to read it uh, because this article, it has been available for uh, a long time and you had time to assume a position as I'm going to demonstrate and a very profitable one. We have been bearish Piper Jeffrey since $54 an hour, which is equivalent to a bubble price for a worthless advisor. Bear in mind again, I'm going to read it because this is very objective. We have been bearish Piper Jeffrey since $54 an hour. This is an average price, all right, an average price in the past seven years which is equivalent to a bubble price for a worthless advisor. So by referring to the recent earnings call in Piper Geoffrey, the company reported earnings uh, last week or this week, uh, I mean, in, in the, end of the end of the week, so basically in a, you know, three days ago, you had the opportunity 
to make a considerable profit by selling short Piper Jaffray. Why? Well, because, as you can see here, Piper Jaffray, ahead of earnings, <clears throat> and I'm going here to zoom the chart, ahead of earnings, you have it here, the chart, all right? Going to pull this to the right hand side. Ahead of earnings, Piper Jaffray was trading around a bit above $50. Well, today, Piper Jaffray shares are trading uh, at $40. So I don't see any surprise whatsoever. So once again, a complementary stock pick in the block of the company without any risk whatsoever by adding to the short side in Piper Jaffray at $50. Bear in mind that uh, according to this chart, and we are going here to zoom out, you have here uh, on the screen, if you had a long position, you had to sell it at $58. That was not the top. Uh, the top, I think, in Piper Jaffray uh, last year in 2015 was around $62 or so. Uh, $58, precisely when Dick Bove said you have to buy bank stocks and shares of Piper Jaffray, they collapsed. Meanwhile, as you, could, uh, as you can see on the chart, shares they bounced to $50 because uh, the ETF for, that represents the financial sector in the US it has been bouncing since we recommended to close short positions at $19.45, all right, after the collapse. So if you wanted to invest in financial stocks in the United States, you had to do so precisely after the collapse and after you profited, you made the most by betting on the short side. And you had to bet or to go short the financial stocks when this stock guru appeared on the TV saying that was time to aggressively buy big banks. I'm going to finalize by saying that last year in 2015, you had plenty of news with regards to China, uh, the Americans blaming China for the problems in the US stock market. Well, the fact is that, and one of the piece of news that you probably remember, was that the Chinese, they were dumping uh, US treasuries. Well, it happens that Chinese are not stupid, all right? If the Chinese obviously had also this news on CNBC, any mild, intelligent individual will do precisely the same. So, no surprise whatsoever. Americans, they buy stocks at the very top, they invest in the markets at the top and they sell stocks at the very bottom as you had the calls in March 2009 when stock gurus, experts on CNBC, once again, their names, Mark Farber, as well as Gene Rogers, they were telling this is the end of the world, sell everything and go short. And these names that I've just referred to or mentioned you have them on widely popular books from also experts, so they say, in evaluating uh, today experts in the financial markets. And they are very popular. They are making millions of dollars. I know about it. Selling books. Selling books. Imagine, I'm not going to refer to the author of the book, but uh, it is, is very uh, popular in the United States as one of the individuals that uh, uh, knows, uh, well, what he's talking about. And so when these uh, uh, also experts, they appear as recently saying that Dow Jones is going to 1,000 uh, if the interest rates, they remain low or near zero for 50 years, let them talk. I think that is the best thing that you have to do, is let them talk. The more they talk, the better it is. What you have to be focused on is to uh, get in real time this piece of news that they are so important since they uh, correspond to the tops 
and the bottoms in the markets, all right? So once again, I demonstrated that I didn't predict absolutely anything other than to read the markets and to know when to act instead of reacting, doing precisely the opposite of every single American. They were buying financial stocks at the top why the financial institutions, they were selling stocks to them. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.